The Earth receives enough energy in a single hour of sunlight to power all human activity for an entire year. This is an absolutely mind-blowing amount of energy freely available for us to harvest and power our planet, with minimal environmental impact compared to fossil fuels. However, solar cells account for less than 1% of global energy production. So what's holding us back from using the technology we already have? The transition from fossil fuels to solar cells and other renewables has been a slow process over the last few decades, with non-renewables still dominating global energy generation. Until there is enough political will and renewable energy sources are consistently cheaper than fossil fuel alternatives, the world is very unlikely to make a significant enough transition to renewable energy. Since the price of energy sources varies wildly in different parts of the world, it is good to compare a metric called the levelized cost of electricity for a region, which accounts for the cost of building, operating, and eventually decommissioning a power source for every kilowatt hour of energy produced. In the UK, natural gas is the cheapest fossil fuel source and has a levelized cost of £66 per megawatt hour, whereas solar cells have a cost of £80 per megawatt hour. However, in the US, these costs are $36 per megawatt hour and $32 per megawatt hour respectively, which is very promising. The vast majority of solar cells used today are crystallized silicon. These are what we're used to seeing on rooftops and in solar farms. The price of crystallized silicon solar cells has dropped rapidly since their inception in 1977 and is already becoming competitive with non-renewable energy sources as strong research and engineering efforts continue to drive down prices. Although, while silicon solar cells are making great strides forward, they are not without their shortfalls. But before discussing these, we have to quickly explain some basic solar cell physics. Solar cells are made from a class of materials called semiconductors. In a semiconductor, the electrons sit within a region called the valence band. When particles of light called photons enter the solar cell, some of these electrons can use this energy to jump up to a region called the conduction band. The gap between these two regions is called the band gap and is very important for the solar cell's efficiency. Once an electron is in the conduction band, it is free to move and do work on a circuit, providing energy. Silicon solar cells can achieve power conversion efficiencies of up to 26.7% for a single crystal cell, relatively close to the theoretical maximum of 29.3%. However, this high efficiency can drop off rapidly with small defects or blemishes in the material. Therefore, they have to be processed at extremely high temperatures, which makes them very expensive and time-consuming to manufacture. In fact, it is estimated that it would take around 170 years to produce enough silicon solar cells to generate the energy required to power the Earth. Another key problem with silicon solar cells is that they are an indirect band gap material, meaning that each time the material absorbs a photon, it also requires a very specific kick in vibrational energy called a phonon at the same time to absorb this photon. This is quite an unlikely event at the atomic level, so the silicon solar cells must be made very thick to increase the chances of absorption, which massively increases the overall cost. An alternative to inorganic silicon are organic solar cells, which are made from molecules containing different combinations of primarily carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Organic solar cells can be made from liquids in a similar process to dye coating or inkjet printing. Materials like this are known as being solution processable, and can be manufactured at very high throughput and at very little cost, and even on top of flexible materials. Further, because of the different combinations of molecules we can choose from, we can modify the band gap, which is very important for achieving higher efficiencies. Unfortunately, organic solar cells in their current development are inefficient and often quite unstable, decomposing over time under heat, excessive moisture, or exposure to UV light. However, there is a new technology with the potential to combine the best two qualities of inorganic silicon and organic solar cells, known as perovskite solar cells. Perovskite solar cells have achieved remarkable growth since their inception a decade ago, sharply increasing in efficiency from 3.8% to 25.2%. These are made from a crystal of the form ABX3, where A is any single positively charged inorganic atom or organic molecule, such as cesium, methyl ammonium, or former medinium. B is a metal with a 2 plus charge such as lead, tin or germanium, and X is a halide ion, that is an atom such as iodine, bromine or chlorine with a single negative charge. Generally speaking, successful perovskite cells are a combination of an organic A site and inorganic B and X sites, combining the best of both worlds when it comes to their material properties. Perovskites, like organic solar cells, are solution processable and also very defect tolerant, so they can be manufactured at very low temperatures very quickly and can also be printed on flexible materials. The two inorganic components of perovskites give it an edge over organic solar cells in development as they allow the material to achieve very high efficiencies. 
Unlike silicon solar cells, perovskites have a direct band gap behaviour, which doesn't require a phonon, and other useful physical properties allowing solar absorber layers to be very thin. Due to the different combinations available, these solar cells can also have an array of different band gaps. This means they can be used in what is called a tandem solar cell, in which different solar cells of different band gaps are stacked on top of each other. The bigger band gap material sits on top, catching the high energy light efficiently and allows the lower energy light to pass through to the lower band gap material. Silicon perovskite tandems have already achieved 29.1% efficiency, but are still a developing technology and will likely continue towards a theoretical maximum of around 38% efficiency. The combination of all these properties allow for perovskite solar cells to be a very cheap, high performance solar cell, which could very well drive the paradigm shift from fossil fuels to solar cells in the near future. Of course, we are yet to see perovskites dominating the solar market, with cells on our roofs and in solar farms. So why is this? Ultimately, perovskite solar cells are just too new a technology to be seen in commercial applications yet. The vast majority of exciting results throughout this video, and in the field in general, have been conducted in well-controlled lab experiments with very small solar cells the size of a postage stamp. The first main challenge here is to be able to scale up these cells to be large enough for solar panels, which poses both a very significant engineering and scientific task. The second main challenge is to be able to have these solar cells last for a long time. Silicon solar cells already last reliably on rooftops for around 30 years. Developing perovskites that can avoid being broken down by moisture, oxygen and UV light is another significant task needed before perovskites will challenge silicon and ultimately fossil fuels. A third important challenge is to replace toxic lead from the system, as it could be damaging to health. This could be replaced by other similar metals such as tin, but is also a relatively new research area. Perovskites are likely to play a significant role in the near future of renewable energy generation and will hopefully be a key component in bringing down the price of solar cells consistently below the price of fossil fuels, transforming the energy harvesting landscape of our planet, massively reducing the anthropogenic contribution to climate change. We'd love to explore other topics in renewable energy and climate science, so please leave a comment on what topic you'd like to see next. Subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of our future videos on these topics. Please also check out our other social media and as always, Look after yourselves, each other, and most importantly, the planet around you. Thanks again, R. Eden.